Hello, this is Matthew Chan of Intrepid Bookkeeping Services, and I have with me Martha Leverett, my office manager, but my, also my business partner in this venture. And we're really happy that you've taken the time to uh, get to know us, spend some time with us, and get to hear what we have to say. So we hope that uh, you find that this time is worthwhile. Now, the first topic I want to talk about today is um, I'd like to introduce Martha Leverett more formally and I just figured there's no way like nowhere like the present but to start about talking about where you came from Martha okay, okay? so Martha um, you know I'm you you are like the unsung hero as far as I'm concerned and you, you make so many things happen and I just feel it's really an injustice that people don't get to know you know more of your history and background I mean people know about what you do today Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, it actually took me some time to learn more about your history and where you got your experiences from. So I figured our listeners would want to know more. Because I really think that where we come from and how we worked in the past is a reflection of what we do now. If you had a good work ethic, work ethic back then, you generally have a good work ethic today. And, and so I really like your background. So... Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you started? I mean, didn't you tell me that you left high school at a fair, or you graduated early, didn't you? Yes. I graduated early, um, took the summer off, and then started working right in the fall. Now, well, how come you <clears throat> went to work so fast? Well, you were bored, or you wanted the money, you wanted to move out, or what was the story there? Um, wanted to, wanted to work. Yeah? Wanted to do, you know, do stuff. I mean, I had already been, um doing oddball stuff, yeah. reports and stuff like that for, uh, my father worked at the post office. Oh, he was like the right. president of the union, uh -huh. and so I was always doing reports and figures and stuff like that for him, so, and I loved bookkeeping, loved right. making things balance. You had a thing for challenge. numbers, even yes. from a mm -hmm. younger years, yes. so you were always good with money and counting and right. you know, tracking it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what, did, what was your, like, first job? Uh, I worked down, downtown at Harmon Volkswagen Fiat. So it was a car dealership? <laughs> yes, yes. And um, started out in the service department. Right. And um, just within a few months moved into the office uh, doing all the contracts for cars and then all the billing and then right. payroll and pretty much all of it within the office. I was like in charge of it. Yeah, but how did they put you in charge so quickly? I mean, you were so young. But I learn quickly. Is that what you show me? Yeah, you show me how to do something. You let me do it, and then pretty much I had it down pat. And the faster I got at it, the more <laughs> responsibility they gave me. And isn't that funny how that you know, works? Yeah. The more, more you're willing to do, do, yeah, the more they're willing to give you. The fun thing about that job yeah. <clears throat> was that every now and while I would get to drive new cars. You know, oh, that was like a little office, part. To the bank. <laughs> You know, and things like that. So that that was, you know, that was fun. Did you ever get a nice car out of it or like a discount or anything like that while you were there? Uh, no, I already had a car um, okay. that I had got when I graduated. Okay. So, All right, know, they I probably really cut you some slack. So you put in a number, how many years? You, 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 I was there for a couple of years. A couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then you moved on to And then what? I moved on to, um, it was Columbus Photo Service. Um, yeah. The first years I was here in Columbus. And then they were bought out by a company called Berkey Film Processing. Right. And um, they moved us all to, well, the ones they took, we moved all to Atlanta um, to an office up there. So I had to go up there and get an apartment and learn Atlanta a little bit. And um, So they want, did they force you to go up to Atlanta or is it something well, they, you wanted to try? Well, they closed the office here. I mean, they moved all the production and everything to Atlanta. It yeah, but you could have left the company. I could have left the company, but hey, I'd then been with the people there, right. you know, three or four years. Right, we were right. like family. You I know. gotcha. The majority of all of us went up, you know, went on up there with them. Um, you know, so I loved it. It was exciting. Um, in the photo finishing business, you get to see... All the different photos. All the different photos. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe what some people would take pictures uh, of. So you know? for free entertainment. So, you know? Yeah, yeah, you would get to do that. And um, then I had a great relationship. Um, I mean, we serviced um, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee. So there were clients in all states. 
at different drug stores and pharmacies, Walmart, Kmart, you know, and we processed all their film. So, you know, you were always dealing, you know, with the different people. Uh, we took care of all the military bases in right. the southern okay. area. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. So Martha, how long were you there all, all in total? I was there 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. Would have went, if they, if I would have moved to North Carolina. You would have been there. I would have still, yeah, I probably would have still been with them. So were, was it a gradual transition of different jobs during those 12 years or were you primarily in the bookkeeping? Or? I was in the bookkeeping, invoicing, receiving payments. So you really had a wide breadth of experience. There. Yes. Okay. So what did you end up doing next after that? Um, I moved back to Columbus and started working at Ethan Allen Furniture Store. Right. Uh, that was another true experience. Ethan um, Allen. Boy, they sell expensive <clears throat> furniture, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, I know a lot, of people, yeah, a lot of people love their uh, furniture. Yeah. It's long-lasting. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Um, I was there for about 11 years till they closed the doors. Yeah. The owner um, decided, you know, he... Um, didn't want to do a bunch of upgrades that Ethan Allen Because wanted. it's a franchise, right? Yeah, because it's a franchise, right. you had to do, I mean, if they decided to change the face of the building, you had to do this. You same. had to do that. They had to get expensive. And it, it was getting expensive, and he was, they were on up in age, and so they just decided to shut it down. And like I said, I was with them till we closed. Um, I did all the ordering of furniture, um, invoicing for customers, receiving payments, setting up people uh, for the Ethan Allen credit program, um, payroll. Right. Everything. Okay. All so, right. So you were now Ethan Allen for quite a bit, and so you had a chance to work for a furniture business uh, mm -hmm. under a franchise, so you had some exposure to that. Yeah. So what ended up happening after that? Ethan Allen. Uh, I worked for a local builder for approximately a year, um, and uh, <clears throat> so you gotta we gotta talk about this a little one year. I know Martha doesn't want to talk about it, but uh, uh, tell tell us what what made you upset? Why you left? Okay, What's well, the when quote? I when I came to the business, yeah. the majority of everything was in his head. Yes, and um, I got it all in the computer. Everything right. set up, all his different companies, you know, all the different information. Everything was in the computer, so if the bank called and wanted something, we could print it out and hand it to him. Pay attention to this, okay? We're and leading came, up to the punchline here. He came into the office one day and said, you know too much about my business. Now, can you imagine that? Okay, think about this. You're close to being the controller, the, the your lead finance person for the company. And the owner does not want you to have a grip on the situation. Does not want to have it computerized. You know, to me, that's like a blessing, and that's why I think it's so crazy. Oh, the bankers loved it. Well, of course, the CPA loved it. It makes business doing so much easier when bankers and your accountants, you know, the tax people. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's happy. It makes doing business way easier versus trying to do this. On a, in a shoe box and all that, but we're going to talk about that in another video. So anyway, go ahead, finish the story. Sorry about that. So, um, like I said, he told me I knew too much of his business, and he hired a, quote, manager to come in and uh, wanted me to teach this gentleman uh, everything I knew and um, pay him a lot more than me and... I just did not see that happening and I decided it was time to just part ways and for me to go on down the road and find something else to do. And you know, the reason why I want to bring this up is, you know, a lot of people choose not to talk about things, bumps on the road. And I, I feel that it's a very important story to tell because it represents how Martha and I like to work. We're, we're very transparent. I mean, she knows so much of my affairs. I mean, I'm always encouraging it. Um, and I think it's important because I can't do everything myself running a business and I think it's important that you have trusted team members that, that bring on board that understand so that you don't have to do every last thing. You don't have to have every last conversation with uh, the, the different people that you might deal with in your business life. But anyway, I don't mean to get on a soapbox, uh, but I, I, I am pretty passionate about it 
And I just felt like it was a very important story in Martha's history. So anyway, after that little short stint, where he, you know, we had someone that didn't want you to know so much. Uh -huh. Then I went to work with a, um, a local bookkeeping office here in town. Yeah. And uh, I worked there for about four years. And um, <clears throat> it was supposed to be that, you know, we were going to be like partners. And right. that didn't work out. And I had quite a few of my clients um, asking, why don't you go out on your own? Why don't you just do your own? So... At the end of about four years, I decided I just wanted to go out on my own and, and see what I could do. So, uh, and that's what I've been doing ever since. And not to, to dwell on, not to dwell on the negatives, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, you were more li well liked uh, than oh, she yeah. was. Oh yeah, there I were mean, quite a few clients that wanted to go with me. Yeah. And. Um, but it was your sense of obligation. Yeah. You know, and loyalty that you yeah. wanted to try to work with her. Yeah. Until circumstances. You know, it's oh, prevented that. Both of my nieces worked with her even after oh, I wow. left. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, they were both still. I brought both of them into her business mm -hmm. uh, and trained them and, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were both still working for her when I left. That's um, right. They probably left within the next year or two, but, you yeah, know, they right. were still there working for her. Okay. Um, so... so so eventually, we get to uh, get to the, the fun years, right? Yes. The fun years yeah. is when you decided you were going to go on your own. Yes. Were you worried about that? 